almost entirely other language. So I was now, I've learned how to listen to language and respond to it, use it, without pretending to master it and be in charge of it. The fishers fished, listened to the, uh, the three elements uh, of uh, water, wind and fire, air and fire throughout this. The fishers fished. Dark within darkness, let them approach that dry estuary, his waterless wave brings down the gravel of worlds to a bed of sand, because the diamond is feeble and restless. Leave them be guided to the motionless storm by the evidence of trees and mineral structures tumbling slowly through the hushed light, so they may see this still disturbance reach deep within the wrenched metals, making them whole. Have them discover flame without fire where it adjusts itself, brooding on wood and stone, that they may bind apes and lower vertebrates and lay them under its blue claws, and after gather them again unharmed and whimpering. They may set nets below the fish leaps, nets above the fowl flies by, fires within the flame scorns withdrawing through stone or settling in the open sky. Then they are snared by water, wind devastates their dreams and fire nests savagely above the derelict jaw. The early poetry I read, you may have noticed that there's an awful lot of cold in it. And I started, and stone floods, one of the the, the meanings of it, I would say, is stone, you know, turning to water, liquefying. Uh, so I, I had been using, I found that after, after the event, that I had been using uh, freezing as a, a sort of a stopping of current, a stopping of spontaneity in the early poems. And it had been coming out more and more. I just let it, let it do what it wanted to do as a, you know, a, a sort of a, a vein that I was tapping, as it were. But then I discovered that I was letting it sort of stand for, as it were, all the stuff that was coming from outside that was sort of, uh, you know, if I was trying to talk as a single voice, would kill it, would, would stop it. Um, and then I found uh, that I could start using this notion of writing under constraint, using sets of rules, adopting, adopting rules that I, I, would, I would set. They might seem meaningless to other people. You know, what the hell would you set that set of rules for yourself? I mean, what's the point? Boring, you know. But what I was doing with them was letting them stand for, as it were, the outer world which constrains my meaning. And uh, also letting these constraints distort my spontaneous language. Because we're familiar all the time with your, um, your feelings, your desires are all the time being taken from you and being fed back to you. You're being told by advertising, by politicians, this is what you want, this is, this is what you desire. Your language is being alienated from you and your experience with it. So what do you do if you're writing poetry? You can't pretend that's not happening, or at least I don't think you can, and, and write decent poetry. So how do you, as it were, build that into the poetry and then preserve a spontaneity against it while allowing it a strength? The, the way I found to do it was as a, to make up these systems of rules. So. Uh, I had already, uh, before this one, the first thing that I, I, I did that with was something called uh, Syzygy, which is in, in, in this book, um, where I did something using an Excel spreadsheet. I was working above in Apple as a business analyst at the time. I was working with spreadsheets all the time, the, the way that somebody else would, would use maybe word processing or something like that. I was being, just being surrounded by this. I was, I was dealing with you know, the financial figures all the time. So it was second nature to me that I would, I would use an Excel spreadsheet. Other people. I've since referred to it as though I was being clever or, or, or isn't it, you know, really avant-garde to do this. For me it was just obvious. Mm. Uh, and one of the things I, I found I could do was to pour text into a spreadsheet if I already had it uh, programmed to map to, uh, you know, using a, a, set, a set of mappings. It would take the words that I put into certain cells and it would project them over here to another area of the spreadsheet and I would be able to read off all the words that I'd written, but I'd be reading off a text that I'd never read before. So I did this with Syzygy. Um, and then I did it, uh, and in Syzygy, it's, uh, it would take me about a quarter of an hour to read it, so I'm not going to go, go near it. But um, I still keep coming back to it. it it's, for me, it's one of the best, the strongest things I've, I've done, and the most challenging for me to, to try and encounter it again. Um, but I did, it, I did the same thing of allowing the same text to be read in two different ways in a number of other texts, which are much tamer, but I'll just read one of them. Uh, this is called Proceeds of a Black Swap. And one of the things I was doing as well was sort of reading things like newspapers constantly, rather than reading poetry and, 
being influenced by it, trying to read newspapers, the financial papers and newspapers, and trying to understand this language. And I was coming across things like in Syzygy, one of the, one of the lines that I, I put into it that's determinative of it, is um, uh, we suffer an exposure to the tune of several millions, which is a quotation from the, uh, the financial pages of a, uh, a newspaper. We suffer an exposure to the tune of several millions. It, which could be, uh, you could imagine Sweeney saying that. He's constantly suffering exposure. The, to the tune of several million, well, I mean, there's, there's snow and there's ice and there's thorns, and there's, you know, it's several, mil several millions of what? It's understood that you, you would substitute money. For Sweeney, it would have been maybe thorns, maybe weather, maybe individual uh, hailstones. Uh, this starts, it's called Pro Proceeds of a Black Swap. A black swap was something in um, traditional Ireland. I, I found it in a, in a, a book on uh, um, early 9th century uh, Anglo-Irish um, language, just the use, of, the use of the English language in Ireland. A black swap was where two beggars would meet and they would swap, as it were, blind to one another. They, each of them would give the other. They would agree to this beforehand. No going back on it. They'd each give, give one, the other an object and the, other, the one receiving it wouldn't know what it was going to be. And they'd have great fun afterwards just looking at, the, at what they got. And they'd be completely worthless, worthless objects. And you wouldn't want to give anything valuable away, obviously. So this is proceeds in the sense of, you know, proceeds of a, of a, a, a transaction or something like that, of a black swap. And the first line of it, is once again a quotation from, from a, a newspaper. And I'm going to read the, um, uh, it in two sections. And in the second one, uh, you'll find all of the, the lines from the first one recycled. As I say, this is very tame compared to Syzygy. Proceeds of a black swap. This morning we saw the blood on, we saw blood on the floor of all the major exchanges. Here fire displays its worst intensities. We entered into certain of them, found us embarrassed, discovering some factor in the difficult atmosphere. As deeds grow vague, remembrance falls from vogue. Redress turns myth, and cruentation a lost hope, made weep again the irregular when it came our turn. For we too have had our losses, where growing fields still answer to good names. To fix, obliterate, possess, and cleanse, often been broke, then perforce broke odd eggs to feed ourselves. Dark maps that underfoot have grown familiar, the least upset is not to recollect our dole. They mocked up quick, could our strong agents err. This morning we saw blood on the floor. As deeds grow vague, remembrance falls from vogue. Redress turns myth and truantation lost hope. The least upset is not to recollect their dull. This morning we saw blood on the floor. Discovering some factor in the difficult atmosphere it made us weep again in the irregular dark maps that underfoot have grown familiar. They mocked up quick. Could our strong agents err? Of all the major exchanges we entered into, certain of them found us embarrassed when it came our turn, for we too have had our losses, often been broke, then perforce broke odd eggs to feed ourselves, then mopped up quick, could our strong agents err? Of all the major exchanges, here fire displays its worst intensities, where growing fields to answer to good names, to fix, obliterate, possess, and cleanse. And the, the word cleanse is very deliberate. It was during the time of the ethnic cleansing in the, uh, the former Yugoslavian Republic. 